Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at feature flags or feature toggles. Feature flags allow us to have multiple versions of a single feature or even new features or removed features in our application, controlling them with effectively what is a true all false. The feature is enabled or the feature is disabled. How we come to this conclusion may vary, it can be something simple like a static true or false, or it can be a complex thing like a time-based thing or a permissions-based thing. But at its core, the idea behind it is that you can have the same source behaving differently based on some flag. This is a great feature because it allows us to do something called A-B testing or canary analysis as well. And even though there are other ways to do it, and I don't necessarily recommend the feature flag concept to everybody, it certainly has the use cases and you should certainly know about it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can add it in your ASP.NET Core application. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can customize it even further. Before I move to the code, I'm just going to remind you that this video is part of my ASP.NET Core series. So if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe or ring the sub notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new episode. So the first thing you need to do to add feature flag support to your ASP.NET Core application is we're going to go to the NuGet packages and we're going to add a couple of packages. Um, first, we're going to add the Microsoft.Feature Management. And by the way, you might need to enable pre-release support for this specific package because it's not officially out yet, even though it's in preview and it has many, many downloads, so you can use it. And it is a Microsoft package. And what you need to do is find these two packages. The Microsoft.Feature Management is the first one. And then the Microsoft.FeatureManagement.ASP.NET Core is the other one. It adds some extra support for ASP.NET Core applications. And this application I have here is a regular MVC application which doesn't have anything custom. It's just a regular application that comes out of the box. You will find the source of everything I'm doing in this video in the description down below. So now that we have that, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the startup.cs and at the top we can say services.add feature management. And this will add some dependency injection things behind the scenes for us. And let me just quickly show you how your code might look like if you have a feature flag. I'm gonna go into views and I'm going to go into home and index which is the home page of this ASP.NET Core application and at the bottom under this paragraph I'm going to say I'm going to inject a couple of things in fact just one thing I'm going to say inject i feature manager and I'm going to give it a name and here I will say if await feature management dot is enabled async this interface just has an is enabled async and then the name of the feature we want to see if it's enabled and I'm gonna say something like new feature flag so this is how I name my feature flag then I can simply say create a p a paragraph and say hey you can see a new feature so if the flag is enabled in this specific deployment of our application, the user will also see this line. And this line can take the place of anything. It could be a button, it could be a new form, it can be anything you want to test in a very specific amount of people without having everybody seeing it. Let's say 5% of the people should see it. You can do this by configuring your deployment to set this to true. And the way you can do that, uh, we actually have two ways, but the first thing I'm going to show you is how you can do it with the configs and configs is really what drives this feature and all we need to do is we need to add an extra object here called feature management and then in here we can have all our flags so the one I added let me just see how I named it it's called new feature flag so we're gonna say new feature flag is false and uh, you'll see how we can actually change this in runtime as well because when I change this in debug mode ASP.NET Core will reload our settings. So let me just quickly run this and show you what we can see currently in our website. And let's see what happens when I turn this to true. So this is the website that comes out of the box and this is what you can see. Uh, the paragraph we added is not visible, but if I go back to the source and I go to the new feature flag and I say, okay, set this to true and I just save, then I can go back to the browser and refresh. And now you can see this new feature because the feature flag check checks true and because it's true you can see it and like I said this can be anything it can be a new tab it can be a new functionality you can use this across your whole application so this is nice and very basic however what happens when you want to add 
an extra endpoint that you want to test to a few people. Okay then, a spinner core has discovered. I will reuse the same flag, but what I will do is I will go to the home controller and I'm going to create a new endpoint here. And I'm going to call this new feature. And I'm going to create a, a view for that. I'm just going to copy the index view and name this new feature here and new feature page. And I'm just going to say, hey, this is a secret new feature. And essentially what this will do is it will make this page display to only a few people. In order to do that, I will need to go on top of the new feature endpoint and add the attribute feature gate and then the name of my feature and the name of my feature as i said is new feature flag so i'm going to use that here and this means that if this is satisfied then this endpoint will be reachable you'll see it if not you're going to get a 404 and i'm going to go ahead and create a secret link to that page here i'm going to do it in the index.cs so instead of saying hey you can see a new feature i'm going to say a go to the new feature and then asp action will be new feature here so this will take me to that new feature so let me run this application and see what we can see so application is running let me just refresh that and now we can see the new link and when i click to that link hey this is a new secret feature but if i go back to my code then i turn this to false and i save and go back to the browser now you can see that as I refresh, I'm getting a 404. And if I go to the home page, the link is not there as it never existed. So this is another demonstration of how this secret feature capability also supports things like secret links and secret endpoints. And it doesn't stop there. We can actually have the exact same check in our Razor page, but because this if check looks a bit ugly if you have everything else to be in regular HTML. We can simply replace that and say, let me just copy the new feature flag name and I'll delete that. And the ASP.NET Core package that we added actually supports some tag helpers. And tag helpers are just something like this where you can have custom functionality in a regular HTML element. And what I'm gonna add is I'm gonna say add tag helper and I'm going to say star, so all the tag helpers inside the Microsoft.FeatureManagement.ASP.NET Core Package. And this will allow me to say feature, and it adds the feature tag helper. I might have misspelled something here. Yes, I misspelled management, of course. So once I get this right, you can see that now feature is highlighted and now I can say name to specify which feature name I'm talking about and I'm going to use the name new feature flag here. So by default, this will need to be satisfied for this to be viewable. However, if I see there are a few other properties in that tag helper and those are requirement and negate. I'm going to start with requirement. Requirement means that if you have multiple feature flags here, like you can have another one and so on and so forth, comma separated list, then you need to specify, do you want all of them to be satisfied in order to show the code in here or any of them to be satisfied? And if it's any, then if one of them is true, you will see it. If it's all, then all of them need to be true to see it. So this is what this is. And once I restart this, you will see that the behavior should be exactly the same. So if I go back to the browser and I refresh this page, I still cannot see it. But if I go to true and I set the feature flag to true, then you can see that refreshing it shows me the link and it takes me to the page. So this is very simple, very basic, but it is a very powerful feature. And the way they allow us to manage this is also very easy and handy. And like I said, this is a configuration driven system, which means that if you're running this in Docker, or in any other containerization software like Kubernetes or ECS or Service Fabric or anything else. You don't have to use this sort of config because sometimes or mostly you will be injecting those configs through environment variables, which means that I can actually delete this here. And if I go to the program.cs, I'm going to simulate this environment variable behavior. 
you can say environment dot set environment variable and I'm gonna say new feature flag is true I'm gonna say just do this for this process because I don't want it to be set for the whole machine and this won't do it I will need to use the same syntax so in ASP net core syntax you need to do the name of the root object and then double underscore and then the name of the next thing in the JSON structure and this will do exactly the same thing as this but now we don't have to have it in the settings it's still good to have it and I think for smaller applications probably the best pra practice but just know that you can also do the exact same thing with the environment variables and if you still have it in the configs the environment variables will most likely override it depending on how you configured your setting structure so if I go to the settings here you can see as I refresh I can still view all the secret stuff because even though it's not in the app settings.json it is still in the environment variable this is all I'm going to focus on on this video it's just an introductory video to show you how they work and what they are in the next video we're going to go deeper using some of the custom filters that feature management supports and also how we can actually write our own filters more complex and you'll see it's very very exciting that's all I had for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notifications of new videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.